Welcome. In this episode of the Let's Fix It Right team is joined by Mr. Roger Radcliffe, President and Owner of Roger's Termite and Pest Control Company. In this video, episode 40, Roger will show us what to expect during a professional pest control inspection and follow-on treatments. In episode 41, Roger focuses on termite inspection and control. Prior to getting started, it's important for you to know that Roger is an expert termite and pest control technician. He has done a truly outstanding job of controlling termites and other bugs in my home and several homes in my neighborhood over the last 15 years. Hey Roger, uh, how long have you been in the pest control business? 51 years. Now when using the term pest control, what does it apply to? In, in other words, does it only apply to insects such as bugs, ants, spiders, termites, etc.? Or does it also include wild an animals like mice, rats, squirrels, skunks, deer, and other animal pests? It would include a combination of all of those. Depends on what the customer's calling for and what you're licensed. With that said, I recommend that we concentrate on pest control during this session. I would agree with that. What is the significance of these two pest control manuals? This manual here is a what they call the Department of Agriculture uh, guide for passing the examination to be a certified pest control operator. If you, before you can do anything to get a license in, in Missouri, you have to apply, you have to pass this Missouri core. After you pass that, then you would reach for one, like what area do you want to be licensed in? This would be general pest control. You have another one that says termites. You have one that says fumigation. I happen to be, over the period of 51 years, licensed in just about all of them. Now, Roger, we've talked about Missouri certification. Do other states have similar certification requirements? Yes, all states have to have a state regulated pest control program. You get your program approved through the EPA. And they, the EPA is responsible for this core manual, is that correct? Yes, they are. Yes. Okay. And I understand that Missouri and the other states are responsible for these general category manuals. Is that true? That's right. Hey, Roger, when you arrive at a new customer's home for the first time, what do you anticipate and what actions do you normally take? Well, they are usually preceded by a phone call when you call the prospective customer. They usually tell us what their target pest is. Like, we'll have a call, say, oh, we got roaches, or we have spiders, or my something along those lines. So when we get to the door, we usually already know what we're going to do and what we're going to mix up and how we're going to treat it. I have a follow-on question. Do you recommend that your customers capture one of the roaches or one of the insects so you can look at it and ascertain exactly what it is? Is that a good practice? It's very good practice, but some people are more skittish than others. You tell them if you don't, if, if you can, put it in an envelope or a baggie and we'll identify it when we get there. Or maybe take a picture with your phone. We get a lot of that in, in, in the modern technology of the phones now. They take a picture and have it ready for us when we get there. If we can identify it, we can, we can really get on the job faster. Now, do these pests require different chemicals and treatments, different type of pests, or is there general one general one for pest control? No, they all require different ones, uh, different mixes, different strengths. We have a clean out, we have a maintenance. Uh, yeah, they're all called different things. There are some that are just good for one thing, does it all. And when we can do that, we do that. Back to the subject of long-term pest control. You just answered a specific pest control yeah. question, but back to this term of, of long-term maintenance. How do you normally approach that? Long-term was what we actually recommended to, to most, most homes. We go out and do the initial treatment. When we go in to do the initial treatment, we'll mix up our chemical, go in and spray the inside. We also will spray the outside with a power sprayer. That would basically do a pin stream, what they call, around the base. Then we'd fan it out in the lawn, fan it up the foundation, 
then turn it to a jet stream and jet stream the eaves for stinging insects, so wasps, bees, whatever we can do. And that, that's, our, that's what we call our initial, our clean out. After that, we would come every three months, one each quarter, spring, summer, fall, and do a power spray on the outside. We, we usually ask the customer at their home, do you need anything inside? The answer usually is no. So on the fourth trip, which is usually in December, we come in and do an inside treatment. So that covers the whole, the whole year. I understand the purpose of that approach is it's easier and more efficient to eliminate the pests outside the home before they get inside where it is more difficult to exterminate them. Is that correct? That's so, correct. This chemical usually lasts about 90 days. Years ago, you could not do the, the pest control the way you do it now because it did not last that long outside. So everybody had to spray inside with the old chemicals, hydrocarbons like Duraspan, Chlordane. Uh, those days are gone. This is pest control is really safe now, and that's uh, most of the, those chemicals are obsolete and even off the market. Following this informative session with Roger, we moved outside my home where he showed me how he applies his proven pest control treatments. Roger, how do you normally apply your pest control treatment? Okay, let's say we're here for say spiders, and we're in the summer. We would take a power sprayer and we would shoot the chemical on a jet stream just a real heavy right down through here in the soil then we the, on this handle on this sprayer we have a turn we can turn it and it will spray a fan spray we'll come out about three feet up about three feet and that will give you a complete spider treatment and and all other insects treatment now, when we get totally done, we'll turn it to a jet stream, and when there's no windows or anything you can contaminate, we'll do all this for bees and wasps. This is a very, very, very good treatment. I understand that this treatment will eliminate most pests during the summer? Oh yes, this sure will. It's guaranteed. In fact, you guarantee all of your work, correct? Turn treatment's done, needed, there's no charge. Roger applies this treatment around the entire perimeter of my house and during his once per year inside treatment he then moves into the basement. Roger, how do you perform a pest control treatment inside a house such as a basement area like this one? Say they were treating for say spiders and crickets, something like that. Because each situation varies. We mix up our chemical with a 90 day surface spray and we'll come in and we'll spray the baseboards all the way around the entire perimeter of the basement. Now at the up, upper level, the unfinished, we'll get all of that also to take care of the spiders. The spiders love to get in your, in your joists area where crickets would be at the bottom. So you do bottom, bottom and top. And another thing we talked about is outside, if, if it be raining, we would use that same chemical, but it would be in the granular form and that'd be broadcast around the outside. As soon as they get wet from dew, moisture, rain, that would take, it, turn to, it turns into a pesticide liquid for you and goes down, does the same identical job, sometimes even better. So it persists for the 90 day period? Yes, then. Okay. For 90 days. Okay, very good. Lastly, Roger and I finished with a discussion about some of these specific pests. Could you tell us a little bit about carpenter ants, so what they do and, and how you treat them, what you look for and so forth? Sure, sure. Well, usually uh, carpenter ants, they can start any time, but the uh, ideal time for carpenter ants is, is, is June. Uh, that seems to be call that carpenter ant month. <laughs> but carpenter ants are the large black ant, they're the largest ant that we'll be dealing with in the, in the Midwest. And they they like the damaged wood. You'll, you'll see a lot of little, little frass, little piles of frass underneath the deck or underneath wherever they're eating. They, uh, they can flat, really tear up a house real fast. A lot of times people don't even know they have them. But they learn they have them by uh, woodpeckers. Woodpeckers will uh, be damaging their 
wood siding. Uh, they'll be pecking, trying to get to those big juicy carpenter ants. And they'll call us out and identify it for them. Roger, can we talk a little bit about cockroaches? Call that the bread and butter of pest control. German roach is the worst one of all. Usually you'll find those infested in bars, lower income houses, I mean that well. If you get them in your home, you walk in the night and flip on the light and run all over. That's the bad one. At uh, 80 degrees, you'll get between 19 and 54 roaches from one egg cap. German roaches are the worst. There's other roaches, that you got ba uh, brown banded roaches, you got oriental roaches, which is nicknamed a water bug. They're always around water and uh, moisture areas. Those, those are easily easy controlled with two sprays. Once for the adults, once for the eggs. Where German roaches take a little bit more time because they're so high concentrated of them. But uh, you can get rid of them if sanitation's good and you get an exterminator too. Somebody knows what they're doing to come in and take care of it for you. It usually takes a monthly uh, service on uh, German roaches. Uh, oh, I'd say three to six months you'd have totally, totally wiped up. Interesting. And the other roaches don't take that many treatments. No, no. Usually two, two treatments on all the roaches except German roaches. One of the most feared insects here in Missouri is the brown recluse spider. Can we talk about them? The brown recluse, also the black widow, uh, are the two, two most feared. You really got to watch the brown recluse. They hide. They're reclusive. They stay behind pictures. And of course, you touch a picture, you're going to get bit. They like to get between the sheets of beds. Why? I guess because it's cool. To, to identify them, uh, you want to look at the back of their head, the back of their back. It has the fiddle, violin shape. That could look just like a fiddle. The black widow, look for the hourglass. It goes to orange, red, sometimes real bright red. Those two you really want to watch. As far as treatment, we use sprays inside and out. We'll use spider powder. We'll put identifying insect boards down to catch one to so make sure we know what we're uh, dealing with. We can get rid of them, but you just have to make two trips, once for the adults, once for the eggs. Then you get on your quarterly program and you'll, you'll, be, you'll be all right. Have any of your customers ever encountered problems with scorpions? Oh yes, uh, scorpions are very plentiful in Missouri. Usually it's out in the country, but we do get calls in the city. One thing about the scorpion is they hook their tail over their body and sting. They don't, they don't uh, bite. Sting is worse than a bee. Watch sandy areas, uh, rocky areas to get in your crawl space and in your attic. Other than that, it's just a routine uh, treatment by a fighter treatment. This concludes this episode on what to expect during a professional pest control inspection and follow-on treatments. In the upcoming episode 41, Roger will focus on termite inspections and control. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and select the YouTube bell so YouTube will notify you of all my new projects immediately after I publish them. At this time, I'm moving on to my next project. You're more than welcome to follow. In addition, if you have a great project that you want to post on my YouTube channel, email me some pictures and a brief description of it. If it qualifies for the Let's Fix It Right standards to help others, I'll interview you over the phone as a guest do-it-yourselfer, produce a high-quality video, and post it on my Let's Fix It Right channel. For the year following this posting, I'll share 50% of the potential YouTube benefits with you. If you have any subject matter requests or recommendations, please contact me. With all of this said, I recommend that you subscribe to my channel, follow my projects, and save a bundle of money doing it.